Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jennifer's Perspective. And today, our topic is... Da, 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 I know I'm being silly, right? Okay, today our topic is if people can't handle the brightness of your light, give them some shades. So basically, it's interesting. It really is interesting because the title of today's topic, I must confess, is not mine. I heard the incredible motivational speaker and author, the goddess, Miss Lisa Nichols. I heard her say that in one of her shows. And it's interesting. A lot of us dim our light because of other people. Now, best selling author and motivational speaker, Marion Williamson, this is one of my most favorite quotes ever. And gosh darn it, every time I think about it and every time I read it, it really, really, it, I get a little teary, but it gives me encouragement. And it, uh, this is the quote it says by Miss Marion Williamson, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be so brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous, you know, all together? But actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of the most high God. You understand you are made in God's image and your playing small does not serve the world. It doesn't serve the world when you have to shrink yourself. And sometimes we do have to humble ourselves, you know, to let other people and lift other people up. But who are we to play small and not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't be insecure around you. You understand? We're all meant to shine. All of us are meant to shine bright like the stars in the heaven and according to Rihanna, shine bright like a diamond because when God made us, he, he has given each and every single one of us that light. You understand? And as God's children, we're born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It's not just in me or it's not just in those with the title or those that are famous or those that are popular. It is in God has given it to each and every single one of us. He has given us that brilliance. He has crowned each and every one of us with glory and honor. How has he done that? Because he's loved us enough to make us in his own image. So if he's made me to be like God, that means, okay, if God is brilliant and fantastic and magnificent, I can't put myself above God, you understand? But he's given me the ability, he's given you the ability, no matter if you're a singer, teacher, songwriter, if you are a janitor, if you are a custodian police officer, whatever your title is, if you're a bookkeeper, if you're a preacher, if you are a farmer, if you are just the person that stands there and holds the door for somebody and you say, come on in, God has given each and every single one of us that brilliance. So whatever you do, do not be ashamed. Do not dim your light sometimes to make other people feel good. Because, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people 
you know, we also let other people do the same because we can't be everything to everybody because my light is a different light. Your light is a different light. Your gift, your talent, whatever talent, gifts, and abilities that you may have, God has given it to each and every single one of us, a different gift, a different ability, a different talent. And sometimes we shrink ourselves because we are either insecure or we may be afraid or ashamed. But as we give other people the permission to let their light shine, let their brilliance shine, let them radiate the magnificence that God has given them, we as people should not be jealous of another person's light. You understand? I cannot be jealous of your light, talent, gifts, or abilities, and you can't be jealous of my talent, gifts, or abilities, because as we are liberated from our own fears, because fear is a terrible thing, our presence automatically liberates others. So I am here to liberate each and every single one of you to just let your light shine and let your brilliance shine and to let you know that you're friggin' awesome. I mean, damn, God don't make mistakes. And if he made you, you are here for a reason, you're here for a purpose, and you are fantastic. So when I sit back and I look and I listen to Miriam, Miriam Williamson's uh, that paragraph as I read her book and I'm saying to myself, you know, Jennifer, that really is true. How long are you going to want to do something, wish you could do something, you plan on doing something, but because I'm afraid of the camera and I'm afraid of the microphone and I'm, you know, that you see that word? F-E-A-R, I'm afraid of how I may come across or how people may, be, may perceive me or something like that. And I know that we all feel like that at some point or another. And as we have a tendency to critique ourselves, you know, we're so, we're so used to hearing that negative ism and stuff like that, that we don't think that we're capable, but we're more than capable. You're more than capable of being and doing anything that you want to do or be just as long as it's a passion, try it. I remember that, okay, I wanted to, I didn't, I wanted to crochet, but I didn't know how, so I took the knitting classes and I made a couple of scarves and I made a couple of things, but I have an aunt. Oh my God, that's her passion. It's something that I wanted to try. When I say she makes the best doilies, the best um, scarves and quilts and mufflers and sweaters, but that is a talent. She can make anything. Give her two crochet needles and some yarn, and she'll make you something fabulous. But how brightly can you shine? How big can you radiate your light? You understand? What if we all shine so brightly that we would light up the sky and light up the city and light up your town and light up the nation just by being our brilliant self? And sometimes when we go into a depression and ang and we, and we turn our we turn our pain inwards, and I look and I see to myself, oh my God, when I look and I see the homeless people, and I look and I see certain people going through certain things, and I look, and my heart just breaks because that is a human being but god has given them a gift and a light and because they're either in pain or they've given up on life and we just get used to walking past them and we just see some things and we say to myself oh my god 
that's a person and they have that same unique light. When you look at a teacher and an instructor that is teaching students and they have that gift and that light and that ability because they're, they're instructing our children and they're educating our children, you understand what I'm saying? So they have their own light and they let their light shine. Many of us are not letting our light shine. This is a gift that uh, God has given us. Okay, so I, I look at Kanye West. Kanye West was a great recording artist. And I know that God is doing something with Kanye, but I can't judge him because I'm not God. And when he started, I remember when he made his first record. Now look at him. He's like shutting down the daggone uh, Penn Station to make the new video and the new recording, uh, Jesus Lives. I look, I remember when Beyonce first started and I saw her at uh, Radio City Music Hall when she was with Destiny's Child. And I look at Beyonce, and this was back in the 90s and stuff. And in that process, in order for her to become the queen that she is now, I remember that she had to take elocution classes because, and she had to take etiquette classes. She had to learn how to speak. She had to learn how to walk. She had to learn how to carry herself and all that other kind of stuff. I look at Jay-Z and how far he's come from. Now he's a friggin' billionaire. I remember when he was in the on projects. So whatever it is, whatever talent, whatever gift, whatever it is you have and you want to do it, do it to the best of your ability. Give God the glory and God will continue to add to it. Every day, most of us, we hold back. We hold back and we dim our light so that others won't be uncomfortable. And you know what I'm talking about. You know it. You know it. You know that sometimes so that other people around you, because they can't deal with it or jealousy or they don't understand it, they, you make yourself small so that they, yeah, but sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you have to do that. But so they won't feel uncomfortable and they won't feel left out. We, we hide and we shrink away and we shrink away. And in that process, we hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves and we rob the people that are supposed to benefit from us just being our magnificent, fabulous, amazing self, not comparison, but we rob those around us of that brilliance that we are here to encourage them. And as I encourage you, you will encourage someone else. As I lift you up and encourage you, you will lift someone else up. And I think when when we don't let our light shine and we not only rob ourselves and we rob others, but, you know, God is saying, look at my child, like, okay, I always want God to be proud of me. I always want not only my family, but I want God to say, yes, Jennifer, well done. So when... You let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and that your father who is in heaven will get the glory. So we can't take all the credit because he's embedded into each and every single one of us that gift and that light that is supposed to radiate out to the world. You understand? So that people can benefit from it, whatever your talent is, whether it's music, whether you're, you're a doctor, architect, writer, uh, musician, uh, you can be a swimmer, 
Muhammad Ali was a great boxer, boom, 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 boom. You know, the world loved him, but that was his talent. That was his gift. What is your talent? What is your gift? Where are you dimming your light so that other people around you can feel comfortable and you are being miserable or you may not even be comfortable. It's a combination of all that we are, that light that God has given us. It is a combination of who we are, who who we was, who we are now, and who we endeavor to be. You know, it's our personal strength, our natural gift, and even our physical vitality and health. All of that is combined into a kind of energy that is a light that shines so bright and radiates, like just radiates, boom, like those big LED lights uh, and like those spotlights and stuff like that. That's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be shining shining brightly we're not supposed to be jealous jealous it's good to be a little competitive but i think if we look at other people we should look at them as an example and say oh i don't want to be like that person but if they can do it i can do it or um Everybody needs a mentor or someone to encourage them and to teach them. Some of us are left to, to learn on our own, and uh, we just have to do the best that we can. But if you find someone that's doing something that you either admire, contact them, ask them, how do you do that? How did you get to where you are? Can you show me? Listen to them. Ask them questions. Let them teach you. Be open to criticism, but it's constructive criticism. And I think that as we, who we are at our core being, as our in our in our essence, at our core being, if we just let our light shine, it would be the fullest expression of who we are, of who you are. And that would, would, that vibration and that belief and hope will, will just encourage the next person like, okay, you can do it. Don't worry about it. Okay, this is what you got to do. Ask a question. Uh, if this is what you need to do, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Do X, Y, and Z, but do not give up. Do not shrink away and do not, do not, and I repeat, do not let fear get the best of you. Even if you have to do it afraid and you're shaking and your voice is trembling and your hand is shaking, do it anyway. And then the next time that you do it, you gain a little bit more self-confidence. And the next time that you do it, you become more proficient. You understand? And I think that who we are and as our light shines, we have to learn to accept the good, the good parts of us and the bad parts of us, the flaws and all. And when we accept our true thoughts, because some of us get stinking thinking, and sometimes I'm telling you, when I think some of the things that I think and I'm saying to myself, oh my God, like I really thought that. Yeah, I thought that, but we can't, we can't even not like ourselves when we experience that or we do those things because when we're in touch with the light that is within in us and we shine it up and let it out and share it, it is seen and felt by people who we know, people who we don't know, people who, even people who just experience come into contact with us on a daily basis, you know, encourage them. Sometimes people may want to ask you a question. Don't be unapproachable. 
answer the question. But then again, it's not what you do, but how you do it. And sometimes how we approach people as well. And it feels good sometimes because we're honoring the God who is within us in our entirety and in total. But too often we dim our light and it leads us to feeling depressed, repressed, and like we're giving or living a half-life because we are stifling that essence and that light that is within each and every single one of us. So we can't we can't keep doing that. And I don't recommend it. And sometimes it's okay to be a little shy and some people are introverted. You know, some people aren't public people and some people aren't private people and everybody has their space where they fit, but it's okay. You think if you can think of dimming your light or shrinking to fit into someone else's expectations of you, cramming your uh, energetic self into a box, that's like putting a size 13 foot into a size six shoe. It does not fit. Or twisting your own personality into a pretzel because somebody thinks that you should either walk like this and talk like that, or you should look like this and look like that, whatever. But if that's not you, we are twisting and deforming our own personalities to please other people. And that's not fair. It's not healthy. And I don't think that we should do that so that somebody else can be happy. We all want everybody to be happy, but at whose expense? Making you happy or dimming my light and twisting and contorting my own personality just so that you can be happy or maybe like me or don't like me. It's not It's not beneficial to me. It's not healthy to me because now my light is not shining and I'm not being true to myself. So I think that when we do that, we're living a half-life and that we are cutting, cutting, cutting away the best parts of who we are and we're not giving it or sharing it with the world or with people who need it. Uh, I think also to become a true, like, because we're living that half-life and it stops you from feeling like yourself. You ever been around a certain group of people or been somewhere and you get that feeling like you get just get so uh and you get like you shrink away or you just feel like you want to disappear <coughs> just so that somebody else can feel good i remember when i used to go to the clubs and i had this one friend oh my god she was she was really pretty but i wasn't as outgoing as she was and we would go to the club and i would just be like a little wallflower sometime why because she sucked all the friggin life out of me that's what it was and she made me feel real friggin crappy even though she was my friend that i felt small that i had to just like okay let her shine let her shine but if it ain't my show, not a problem. You can go ahead. I can I can move out of the way and let you have your own spotlight. And I can understand that. But even when you have, I remember another time I had a supervisor. She was younger than me. She could have been like my freaking granddaughter or something like that. But I had to know my place. Even though she was younger than me, I still had to respect her authority. You understand? Because she was still my supervisor. She may not have the life experience that I had. But 
Oh, the phone's ringing. Sorry. <laughs> she may not have had the life experience that I had, but I had to respect her authority because of who she was. You understand? Because she was my supervisor. Now, when we all go to different places and we're all in different uh, situations, there's a time and place for everything. But we don't have to hurt ourselves to make somebody else feel good. Do you you kind of get you kind of get what I'm saying? So when we are living a half inauthentic existence with does which doesn't light up ourselves, we don't bring light to anybody, we don't bring light to the situation. It's like a candle that's just you know, it's not full and bright or anything like that. And these are ways that we dim our light so that it doesn't shine. And that way is hiding our views. When we hide our views, when we hide our views, our opinions, our desires, and our boundaries from other people in an effort to be liked and to feel safe. We minimize our true feelings because people tell us what isn't real or we try to ignore our own truth because it's not convenient for other people. Now that's not fair. That is totally, totally, totally not fair, but we do it. We do it. We hide our opinions, views, desires, and boundaries from other people because we may feel that they may not accept us, they may not like us, and sometimes so that we can feel safe. Mistaking our light for our accomplishment, meaning our bank accounts or our external validations or our self-worth, these are things that that's not that's not our light that's not our essence because we're not our bank accounts we're not our accomplishments and we are not external validations all these things doesn't make us who we are and it doesn't it doesn't it, it gives us value on paper in the business world and stuff like that. But your true value and your true self-worth is you, you, the individual, you, the person, you, the one with that precious soul, you, that you are the most valuable and the most precious thing, thing. Everything else is external, the bank account, uh, your accomplishments, and the accolades, and the external validations. Those are like cherries on top of the cake. But you are the one that is valued and precious, and that God has put that light into to radiate out into the world. You understand? Another way that we dim our light is by overexerting ourselves and overextending ourselves and doing too much for everyone else and blowing a fuse and because we run out of because we run out of steam and energy and stuff like that, we become overworked, we become overstressed, and now we're overworked, we're stressed out. We're moody and we're taking it out on other people. Why? Because we overextended ourselves. These are ways that we can, these are ways that we dim our light and we worry if we let it out, who we really are, shine to our fullest expressions that will be made fun of, ignored, or made to feel or think that we were wrong because we all, what, because we're all not like that? No, we're all different. Do you understand? <clears throat> we're all very, very different. But my difference and your difference and 
Your difference is what makes us so authentic. And this is why we shouldn't hide and we shouldn't shrink and we shouldn't do the comparisons because your light, whatever it is, gift, talents, or abilities can uplift me or what or the person next to you whatever it is then we also have a fear that this is also real either because we were told as a kid that we're either too much you ever have that one kid like oh my god i have four children but one of them just yaks all the time that was me well it's, it's seven of us, and my mom used to say, oh, my God, what is wrong with my children? Why they can't use our, their inside voices? But uh, we talk. I think my I used to talk a lot, and I remember one time I think I did something. I said a bad word, and it was late at night, and I was screaming and hollering, and my father took my lip, and he was like, mm, shut your mouth, little girl, da 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 da, da. You know, because I was just making way too much noise. And then I had to learn to be like really, really, really quiet. And now I only speak if I have something to say. And But I had to learn. So, uh, and then you may have that one. And I think when we do that sometimes, I think children are supposed to be disciplined. I really do. But when we tell our children and you know we dim their light because of either our the way that their parents or their parents before them had raised them so now we bring that into raising our children and you know when we when we do that i think also that can help to dim our light sometimes and then what if you've been told as a kid that either you you know girls can be really 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 mean mean girls everybody that has went to junior high school or high school have had that mean girl experience where you're not in the popular group but there's the popular group and people can be really mean spirited, especially girls, because I don't, where do they get that from? I don't understand. They can be really clicky, but very catty all the time. And then we grow up into becoming women and we take that same friggin' attitude into adulthood. And instead, we lift each other up and empower each other and encourage each other. We get catty and we want to tear each other down. And I just never really understood that. For some reason, I never understand that. But these are experiences and these are like life lessons. And I think we have all experienced that at uh, one time or another. And then we, let's see, what's my next thought? And then we go through that same thing as when, and I noticed that, that, that men do it too, but in a different kind of way. And I think when they do it, they, you know, we all can't be boxers and we all can't be karate champions and stuff like that. But now there's so much friggin' violence. Oh my God. People don't want to talk anymore. Oh, now you got something to say. Now you want to shoot somebody. Now they just took a took kill. You know they're killing the light. That's a, that's a life that is meant to shine brightly. So how do we deal with these coping mechanisms? How do we address these issues? How come we as a nation and as a people? aren't lifting each other up. And then we turn to our politicians that are supposed to be our leaders. And what do we do? Nobody's not doing anything. So what do we, what is our responsibility as human beings? How do we let our light shine? Election day is coming up. I'm not even into politics, but I think you should vote because now 
there's so much stuff going on right now that I don't understand, but that's a different subject. Anyway, I veered off a topic there. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No politics. Okay. Now, second, we mistake our light with accomplishment, financial success, and other external validations. We ignore the basic truth that we are and have a natural light and it's inherently loved. Now, are we all worthy to be loved? Yes, we are. And I can't help but say it, you know, People are coming into this country, and when I look at the mess that is going on with ISIS and the way they're pulling these people away from their children, I, I don't get it. It's not right. And how these people go to work, and then they snatch all the... How are you going to arrest somebody on their daggone job and have the kids sitting there crying because why because they were sitting there waiting for their mommy and daddy that's not letting people's light shine that's snatching the friggin life out of them but that's another example you know everybody's worthy to be loved each and every single person is worthy to be loved because they exist just because they exist, not because of their title, not because of what they have, not because of what they don't have. We want to be told that we are acceptable. Everybody wants to be accepted. We do. We all want to be accepted rather into our innate acceptance of ourselves, the truth that's easy to believe logically yet hard to embody is that we're all worthy beings. Each and every single human being on the planet is a worthy human being. The some of us choose to make really bad choices, then they have to pay the consequences for that because of the choices that we make. I can understand that, but we're all worthy each and every single one of us, even the ones that don't feel worthy, is worthy. This is a truth that great spiritual teachers have been reminding us of ever since humans could doubt themselves. It's the truth that we know that we know about that we don't extend ourselves enough to other people. And so that we're all grabbing at something and we're so angry, but that's the wrong light. And we all have to be, we don't have to be like that. We really don't. So even if you may not totally understand that, a little kindness goes a long way. So let your light shine, let your good deeds shine and let that light that God has given us shine brightly to the world because somebody can use your talent, somebody can use your gift, and don't dim it and don't turn it inward to a point where it becomes bitterness and self-hate because that's not good. You want your light to shine bright and then when you put it on, it fits like a nice little comfortable sweater, you know, and it makes you worthy to be loved and you're lovable, and you're approachable, you know. So I think we should let those fires burn bright, burn out, burn real, real bright because our dear body is holding on to unexpressed anger when we do not let our light shine brightly. With that unexpressed anger and sadness is about not being listened to and your soul is still crying out to, for full expression and full acceptance. And there's one huge unacknowledged factor that 
may be at play. What is that? Maybe we're, maybe you, maybe me, we're unintentionally either, we can also do it by overeating. We, because we don't express ourselves or get to express ourselves or feel accepted, some of us have a tendency to overeat. And some of us have a tendency maybe to drink a little too much, or we may eat foods that drain our energy. I know for me, I can't have uh, too much uh, refined sugar. If I have too much sugar, whether it's the sugar or in carbs, rice or pasta, I get like a touch of an eczema on my hand, and I notice I get like really sleepy because it's bad energy food. So if we put good things into our bodies that give us enough energy to give us energy to move, to be, to act, you know, some of those good looking foods, oh my God, like some lasagnas and pastas and certain cheeses, that food looks really good. And it tastes really good, but I can't have too much of it because it's too much carbs and it's refined sugar. Uh, If we do substitutions, like with natural foods, more vegetables, more fruit, uh, lots of water, less sugary soft drinks and stuff like that, these are things that give us energy. A lot of natural foods... And another way that we dim our light and our brilliance and how we stop it is there's a part of you that is scared to be seen. And when I thought of this, I thought of myself and I say to myself, there's a part of us that's scared to be seen. There's a part of of each and every single one of us that's scared to stand out and make an impact. And I think when dimming our own light with excess weight and hormonal digestive issues or other health issues is a secret strategy that is hidden At the back of our minds, I think it's a way to also self-sabotage ourselves because we may not trust, you know, we may not even trust our own success or being afraid to be successful or just to be afraid to be seen and heard or just to stand out. Uh, For now, trust me, when I write to you, And I say to you, like, okay, then your light is a reflection of the divine reflection of God, of nature, of the universe, of the divine energy itself that keeps the stars burning and the planets rotating. That's that same kind of light that is with inside each and every single one of us. And our light is just as worthy, just as beautiful and it is stunningly brilliant and it is our own individual light now nothing you can do will ever dim that light totally or completely but there are things that we do that actually dims it and you can never hide it from those of us who wish to see it and those of us who wish to honor your true strengths and your true greatness. So when people are actually for you and they can appreciate and accept you, just be yourself, let your light shine and bless us with your presence. Bless us with your ideas. You understand? And I think it's a really, really good thing to know every time that you look up into the stars and you look at the entire universe and the galaxy and the Milky Way and everything, each and every single one of us has that same brilliance that is awesome, authentic, and unique that is with inside each and every single one of us. So let your light shine and let it just radiate and be a blessing
to someone, okay? Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for listening. Follow me on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Anchor, Instagram, and welcome to the website at Jennifer's Perspective. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. God bless you. I love you. Love you, too. Mm. Mm-hmm.